Hello and welcome to Ensemble Learning. Uh, in particular, the techniques stacking uh, in the umbrella under the umbrella of uh, Ensemble Learning. Uh, I'm Kashyap Murtaza, instructor at AI Sciences, and in this video, we are going to talk briefly about what do we mean by Ensemble Learning, and in particular, uh, we will spend more time on understanding what is the stacking, um, and we will also see that if we generalize the stacking idea, it actually brings the stacking actually brings us to deep learning. So let's dive in and see first what is ensemble. Uh, ensemble learning in machine learning refers to uh, combining several models uh, trained on the same training data and uh, somehow combining the predictions of different kind of models. So for example, we can have different models. Let's say classifier one is let's say KNN, classifier two is SVM. Classifier three might be, for example, a neural network or stuff like so. And uh, we combine their predictions on training data. And this uh, combined classifier eventually gives one prediction and that's the prediction on the training set. Because it is uh, difficult sometimes to find out the accurate model for the data set at hand, it might be intuitive to uh, to actually uh, apply different models and all available models in general on the same training data and then uh, combine different models uh, to make one meta model. And in practice, it turns out that combining different kind of models actually outperforms in most of the cases uh, than using individual models. Now, there are several techniques in ensemble learning. Uh, the most famous techniques are bagging and boosting and stacking. In this particular video, we are going to talk about stacking. For more information on boosting and bagging, uh, please see our other videos on the same channel, AI Sciences. The link is given in the description of uh, this video. So let's see, what is stacking? So um, in stacking, what happens is, um, um, in, in for example, um, if, you, if you really want to apply k-fold cross-validation, what happens is the original data is split into different folds. Let's say k is equal to two. That means uh, your data, training data, is split into, let's say, two folds. Uh, for example, maybe, um, well, let's say it's, uh, let's say k is three. So that means these are three splits, one, two, and three. So for the first fo fold, let's say one and two, they combine and make the training data and three is uh, acts as a test data or validation data. For the next fold, maybe one and three are combined for training data and two acts as uh, this particular portion of the training data acts as a validation data. And for the third fold, two and three combine for, let's say, a training data and one acts as uh, validation data. Or here, they have written uh, text data. I've copied this image from ResearchGate. So uh, for each fold, now you have a training data and test data and you get your training data and actually on the training data, um, let's say the training data, you choose for example different kind of models. For example, random forest, uh, knife base, uh, KNN, support vector machine, gradient boosting, and ana boost. Here, uh, one very interesting thing um, can be noticed that random forest is an example of bagging. Uh, and uh, ADA boost is an example of boosting, uh, which by themselves are ensemble learners, ensemble classifiers. But this idea of stacking is so general that uh, you can use any model here. And by the way, even uh, after um, doing ensemble learning or uh, making a model, at the end of the day, the ensemble learner itself is a model, uh, can be used as a standalone model, no problem, like here. So what happens then is uh, on the on this kind of training data, um, for training data, uh, you train different models. And on test data, you actually test, or the validation data, you test or you evaluate or make predictions on the test data. So for fold one on test data, random forest makes these predictions, knife base makes these predictions, and so on. Uh, and these predictions, um, if uh, we just combine these predictions together, for example, prediction for random forest, prediction for uh, knife base, prediction for nearest KNN, prediction for SVM, gradient boosting, and ADA boost, you can now think that this, these particular numbers, they can act as a feature vector, and we can have another classifier that can be trained on these feature vectors. 
That's the basic idea of stacking. Um, now for the next fold, for example, fold two, uh, you do the same stuff and you get the predictions and stack these predictions here. And after doing all the K folds, you have all the training data actually appeared in a different way here because in every fold, the part of the training data that appears here is appeared as a validation data. But all the training data is here and now you can use these predictions for different classifiers um, to, to call them as features and you can build a second lever or learn a second lever classifier using the predictions of previous models as, as features. And the output of this model is actually the output, eventual output. So um, in a nutshell, what you have is um, you have some training data, training data, and you have, uh, you split the training data into, let's say, the training data and validation data. And you train different models on training data. And for each training example, you generate a prediction. For example, let's say these are three models and these are the predictions on these three models. Now these three predictions by themselves can act as a training data for a model at the next level and you can learn the weights for this model. And that's the result. Um, <clears throat> it may be confusing uh, here, so let me, um, let, me, let me go step by step and act actually explain this stacking with an example, uh, single level stapping, stacking. So let's see an example. So uh, for concreteness of understanding, let's think that we have training data, let's say classification data, or maybe regression data, whatever. So let's take the example of classification data. And let's say these are our feature vectors. So let's say x11, um, one, one, x12, one, x13, dot, 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 x1d. Let's say this is the first feature vector. Um, and the second feature vector is x21, x22, x23, dot, 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 x2d. And then we have a lot of samples. Each column vector is a sample and each um, of this number is a corresponding feature. So let's say x n one, x n two dot dot dot, x n d. That's our let's say data matrix where each column, each column here represents a feature vector or the representation of our training data training point. So that's one point or a feature vector. That's another point or a feature vector, and we have d features total. And let's say the corresponding labels here are, let's say the corresponding labels are here y1, y2, dot, 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 yn. These are corresponding labels. Maybe a regression problem or a classification problem, whatever. Now, uh, let's say we have, we have chosen three models, uh, classification models. Um, let's say model one, whatever that model is. Uh, let's say we choose another model, let's say model two, whatever that model is, and let's say we choose another model, let's say model three. Let's say we choose three models. And we train uh, our model one on the whole training data. And after training of this model, we actually evaluate this, let's say on this first example, the first training example, and it generates basically uh, Y1, uh, one. So let's say this, let me call this as hat. Um, if we train M2 on the same training data and evaluate that on the very first sample, and let's say the prediction uh, on that is um, y, um, y1, 2, hat, and similarly the prediction of M3 on the same data is y1, uh, 3, hat. Now you can see this itself is a feature vector with three features. The feature one is prediction, the feature two is prediction of model two, feature three is a prediction of model three. And in general, um, these predictions can be probabilistic measures or confidence values rather than discrete labels um, either way. Now if we plug in the second data point into the models, we will get for example y21 hat, y22 hat, and y23 hat. And similarly, we have the data set. We can generate the whole data set 
of features like y um, n one hat y n two hat and y n three hat and this is the new data set and the corresponding labels to this data, data set are exactly the same labels uh, here we have y1 here we have y2 dot dot y n now consider this as a completely new training data set and we fit a fit a particular model let's say m4 or something for this particular training data set and the prediction of this is actually the prediction the final prediction so if we have for example a test data test data point the test data point will go to model 1 it will be having a prediction it will go to model 2 it will go to model 3 it will be having for test data we will be having three predictions out this will act as a feature vector which will go to m4 and it will generate its final label uh, label el label so that's what the single level stacking is which means that we have one layer of multiple models and the second layer is one classifier that is trained on the predictions uh, used as feature vectors and this training is completely independent uh, and this m4 can be completely independent from these three uh, normally this uh, m4 is chosen to be logistic regression normally but one can use any kind of models to to actually generate this final classifier or regressor in case of regression now I'm going to explain the uh, general version of stacking which actually goes to rather than single level let's um, let's break the rules and go to multi-level so let's say we have uh, this training data let's say this is our training data whatever that training data is and let's say this is our model one let's say this is our model two this is our model three let's say and let's say we have several models let's say model uh, k let's say the training data goes to this the training data goes to that to that and to that and they all make their predictions and now after predictions we have another training data set along with the same labels here we have a y matrix the y matrix is same here but here we have let's say x matrix here we can call it x after level one so these are predictions on this training data set uh, depending upon how many models we use the number of dimensions the, the width which refers to the number of points will stay the same as this one but the length or the number of features depends upon the number of models we use now what we do is we actually pick uh, further models let's say m um, let me call this as layer 1 m121 31 and k1 let's say this is layer 2 m12 m two two dot a dot m something like um, maybe l two these are all different models we use those and <clears throat> we fed this uh, the outputs of the previous models uh, into these models and we get another training data or features and um, then we use other models and we get the features and finally we use one model to actually get the predictions does this remind you about something yeah if you stack um, for multi-levels that's exactly what uh, deep learning is or deep neural networks so deep neural networks are actually the uh, actually the specific example of multi-level stacking um, I should also mention that stacking actually is so general that all other ensemble techniques uh, they are actually special instances of stacking for example how you combine different models together if you change the combining criteria then one time the stacking will be bagging the other time the stacking will be boosting and stuff stuff like so and there are other ensemble learning techniques as well and stacking is most abstract and most general out of all uh, the way you change how you combine the classifiers and the way you decide how many levels you will go in um, stacking will turn out to be one of the other ensemble techniques as well and it turns out that it is more robust um, as compared to other techniques as well so most of the people they actually use stacking uh, for the for these kind of real examples um, I should also uh, by the way I should I should just mention that um, 
Um, normally in uh, deep neural networks, these models are normally logistic units or, or some units with some kind of nonlinearity. And normally they are all the same. Um, same means uh, they have all same model class and similar goes for the second layer and so on. But in general, in deep learning, this is not a restriction. That's how the, in practice, people implement deep neural networks, but this is not really a restriction. Uh, one can just go general, as general as possible. And then um, this uh, deep neural network is actually multi-level stacking. Uh, one difference uh, between stacking and blending is, is that um, if, for example, the features uh, for, for, so for example, this is model at level two, and this is set of models, for example, uh, several models. Um, let me raise that. So, so let's say this is um, model one at layer two. This is model one, model two, and this is model K. So what happens normally is if you have training data and you have validation data, so this is let's training data, that's validation data, you generate the features of the training data, you train on training data and generate the features of training data, and then you actually use that, those features on training data to train the um, second level classifier. That is called stacking. But what if you train the first layer of models on training data, but after training you generate the features of validation data and train your classifier, the second level classifier, based on the predictions of the validation data for the first layer. Then the same kind of technique is known as blending. And it turns out that it actually wins the um, Netflix competition. Um, so, so beautiful. So um, that's about um, stacking, uh, multi-level stacking, and also the link of stacking with uh, deep neural networks. Um, for more of our videos in data science, um, please go through the, the link given in the description of this video. And um, if you like this video, please press the like button, subscribe our channel, and um, share this video with your friends. Uh, see you next time.